जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा कुंज जय गोपी जनवल गिरिवर Hare 
distribution key okay. amazing garland but a lot of swords are net key jai <laughs> I'm going to write a book on the different garlands that I got throughout the history of my Krishna conscious career <laughs> it's quite a variegated book <laughs> From ones that are soaking wet to ones that are full of mosquitoes, <laughs> to ones that have uh, sharp daggers on here. <laughs> uh, we got all kinds. <laughs> Make sure you give the worst garland to the person who speaks. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. So, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Namaho Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Sarasvati Devi, 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 Sarasvati Devi,
That's the topic given by the CEO. So, uh, book distribution, Christmas marathon. We spoke a little bit last night about this particular subject. And uh, there's two reasons why it's given some emphasis at this time of year. And maybe there's more, but I can think of two particular reasons. Of course, book distribution goes on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But there's been always been the focus and the emphasis and a lot of centered on energy on the Christmas marathon. And because Christmas is a time where people are in the spending mood. <laughs> they're out there and they have money, and they've saved money all year and now they're going to use it, and they want to buy gifts for their friends, family, and others. And so they're always hunting what is the best gift. <laughs> That's one of their moods, to try to find that gift that they can give to the, that person who is someone that they would feel would appreciate and need that gift. So in that mood, we try to fulfill that mood, because uh, we have a gift that's unique. And that is that knowledge which can lead one to complete and perfect happiness. So they're not aware of that, but we are. So therefore, in that mood, we are trying to capture that mood of spending and giving gifts so they can have a gift to give to whoever they want. Of course, a lot of times we give the gift to them and they also use it for their benefit, but we see that when gifts, books are bought, uh, we don't really know, but we can actually conjecture that a lot of the books that are bought are read by people who didn't buy the books and who actually uh, benefited from the books more than the persons who actually received the books initially. So it's a good time. And the second thing is, of course, the spending mood is there and the idea of giving gifts. So we try to emphasize or take advantage of that by um, distributing as many books as we can this time. 
because we know the book scores will accelerate to higher and higher levels like that. Uh, but the thing is, the devotees who are distributing the books and devotees in our society, we should read the books too. <laughs> And know what's in the books, <laughs> because a lot of times when Prabhupada, he would also he would give us some smile chastisement. So you're out there distributing books. When people ask you what's in the book, you say, "Well, our teacher he writes, and we we sell. That's all. <laughs> that's uh, that's our answer." But that that doesn't satisfy neither the person who is uh, distributing nor the person who possibly could receive the book. So the more you know of the value of these books, the more enthusiastic you are to give these books to others. The more you've taken advantage of this knowledge yourself, the more you will have that same feeling in giving it to others. So that's why we want to uh, understand deeper these, owner, these books that Prabhupada gave us and read them and study them and know them and be able to speak about them at any given time. And that way, we, that treasure that we're also trying to give to others is, is situated nicely within our heart. Because when you experience something that's wonderful and you have that same wonderful uh, gift to give to others, then you, your enthusiasm to give it is the difference between them taking it and not taking the books. <laughs> it's not so much the books that really make the difference, it's the people who are distributing them. The more enthusiastic, the more aware of the knowledge that we have in front of us, and the more we rare understand that this knowledge is not coming from anything in this material world, it's descending from the spiritual world. It's coming from Krishna himself. Transcendental knowledge is called aparusha, and aparusha means not made man. It's made by God, it's spoken by God, and it's... Uh, that knowledge which solves all problems for all people at all places and at all times. So the more that conviction is there in the book distributor, the faster those books go out. <laughs> and because they pick up on your enthusiasm and your uh, that enthusiasm is an expression of everything you know about the book and everything you've gained about the book also. So we want to read and study these books and to become that way when we're out there distributing books. Or we get inspired to distribute that, these books when we know that this knowledge is life-saving. It's literally life-saving. We can use that word in two ways. One, it brings one to real life and saves one from a false sense of life, which is to focus simply on trying to fulfill the needs of the body. And it gives the direction to the real person, the soul itself. But in another way, it actually saves the physical body too. There was one story where one man, this was in America, and he was sitting in his van, and he had a, you know, one of these vans, and uh, he was uh, thinking of committing suicide. So he was in a parking lot, which was a shopping center, so he had taken his um, tailpipe from the uh, van and run it back into the cab. So when he turned the engine on, all the fumes would come into the cab. And that way he would, uh, he would kill himself. This was his program. So he was doing it. He was sitting in the, and he started the engine. Just when he began, uh, some man knocked on his window and it was a book distributor. He happened to be in the same parking lot. And the person who was in the cab, not, he was not interested, so he just kind of said, you know, go away. And the book distributor did go away, but what he did, he left the book on top of the man's car. He put it on the windshield, underneath the windshield wiper. And then he left. Now the man, he's, uh, he gets a little curious, so he shuts off his engine. <laughs> And he reaches outside, grabs the book, and starts reading it. He turns to one page and he says, Here is the formula for happiness. <laughs> that was the title of one of the chapters. And so, you know, when you're committing suicide, obviously you're not happy. <laughs> and so he read that whole chapter, and it really inspired him 
to think of, again that maybe there is happiness out there, I can find it somewhere. And uh, it just so happened that when he looked in the back of the book, there was uh, a listing of the temples, and one he found the nearest temple and came and told his whole story and actually started to associate with devotees regularly and practice Krishna consciousness. So that's a, that's a pretty amazing story. And so in that sense, uh, book distribution saves lives. <laughs> it saved his physical life and it actually it saved his spiritual life at the same time. So we don't know the benefit of what, what we're doing out there. It's so amazing because those who distribute books regularly, you can talk to them and they'll tell you, there is nothing better than this. Nothing better than this. The, the, the happiness and the enthusiasm and the satisfaction you get from distributing books cannot be compared to anything. Sometimes we might compare it to an ecstatic care tone. <laughs> But that's, you know, that's for all of us. But one who is distributing books, when they get it, when you get a taste for distributing books, that's all you want to do. <laughs> that's all you really want to do because when you see someone take a book, then you can, you can feel Krishna saying, thank you. Krishna is really, he's there, you know, in the heart of the book distributor. And Somehow or other gives that message of Krishna to someone else, Krishna says, wonderful, keep going. <laughs> and you can feel that. It's not like something ethereal or imaginary. It's real. It's real. We have one devotee in our movement, and he's known as the king of book distribution. And his name is Vaisheshika Prabhu. He goes around the world and he gives seminars on book distribution and he's always out there in book distribution. He's been doing it since he joined the movement in the 1970s. He hasn't stopped doing book distribution for 50 years now. He's either out there doing it or going around the world, going to different temples, yatras and places where devotees are and giving lessons and seminars on the importance of book distribution. Uh, he wrote that book, Our Family Business. Um, did you read that? Um, yeah, how many of you read the book, Our Family Business? It's a really amazing book and it's full of stories and the reasons why book distribution really is so important. Why, one of the reasons why it's so important and so effective in changing people towards Krishna consciousness is that Srila Prabhupada received that instruction directly from his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta. He gave him the instructions to go to the West, and that was the most important instruction he received from his spiritual master. But then Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati gave him a second instruction. If you ever get money, print books. Because it's the Brihat Murdanga. Uh, Brihat Murdanga means the great Murdanga, and Prabhupada would use the example that when you play a madanga, you can hear it within a certain range. But these books can go anywhere. And one of the examples of the power of book distribution is the Russian, Russian Yatra, which is the biggest Yatra outside of India in any, any place of the world. There are actually more than 100,000 Russians practicing Krishna consciousness. Why? Because of one book that got inside, really. And that was Shambhasundar and Prabhupada came to Russia in 1971. And they had to go through the immigrations. Of course, at that time, there was communist Russia. No, things were very tight and anything religious was seen as a crime. And if people were trying to smuggle in, uh, you know, religious books, they could either be immediately thrown out of the country or put in jail and maybe fined. And so, but, so Prabhupada knew that, so he didn't carry any books, and Shambhasundar didn't know it. But Malati, his wife, put a book in his suitcase, a Bhagavad Gita. And she, he didn't even know it. So when they got to the immigration office, 
the person said, okay, open your suitcase. And then he opened, he saw the book. And uh, he picked it up. And there's, there's different stories what happened, but the story that I heard the most is that when he picked it up, he dropped the book. And Malati had put all kinds of papers and pictures inside the pages of different places for markers. For, and all of these pictures and papers went all over the floor. So the immigration officer was a little embarrassed, so he started picking him up, he put him back in the book and gave the book back and didn't even consider it. So that's how that book got in. And that book was copied because the devotees didn't have any wings to, any money to publish a book. So they would copy it by hand, the whole Bhagavad Gita by hand. And then one person would copy it, and then they had two copies, and then they would have more copies, and then different devotees would copy the book. And then they were selling it, and devotees at that time was just a few devotees, of course, and those that were practicing were buying the Bhagavad Gita and paying their whole month's income. Whatever money they made within the month, they would give for the Bhagavad Gita. It was such a taste for transcendental literature coming from Russia. And gradually that spread and spread and spread. And today what you have is one of the biggest yatras in the world. One book got in there and it reached one person. Yeah. And then one, that one person made it available to others. So this is one of the examples of how book distribution has really changed an entire country into becoming Krishna consciousness. So these books, Prabhupada said, just like during the war, when you're trying to bombard the enemy with various bombs, he said you fly overhead and you just drop bombs like rain. So Prabhupada said, we want to do that with these books. Rain them down everywhere in the world. <laughs> There's one story in India where one, uh, the devotees were uh, Shivaji train station in Egypt, Chaturji Shivaji train station in Bombay. And the devotees were out on a Christmas marathon. And uh, so they had stationed themselves in different places in the train station. And so one man, he's walking along. So one book distributor, he comes up to him and offers him a book and he starts talking. The book, the man says, no, I'm not interested. Thank you, and he walks away. And now he's walking, he's continuing to walk in the train station and there's a second book distributor there. He approaches the same man. And the man says, oh no, actually I met your friend there, I'm not interested, thank you very much. And then he, he continues on. Now he's walking a little bit farther and a third book distributor comes, same man. <laughs> so at this time he thought, must be God's arrangement. All right, so he bought the book. <laughs> That's an example of how, <laughs> how book distribution works in a very interesting way. Devotees were everywhere. There was one girl in that, in that yatra in Bombay, she distributed 12,000 Bhagavad Gita's in one day. 12,000. I was there and they were reading the book scores during the next morning's morning program. That was a regular feature. And they announced her name and they said 12,000. And I said, is that a mistake? <laughs> And then I had to investigate and I found out she went into one corporation. She talked to the CEO of the corporation and he agreed to buy 12,000 Bhagavad Gita's for each and every employee in his corporation. And so, you know, when the boss says, read the Gita, you better read. <laughs> so, he, all he did, she did was convince one person who had such influence and then 12,000 Gita's went out. To, so that was a nice example of how, you know, if you get the right person, you know, sometimes you get these people who have positions and power and they really like the book and they want to give it to their friends or their, their employers, employees like that. And so there's many, many stories uh, another nice story of book distribution in Italy. 
In Italy, the, the trains, they run regularly and people go from, from city to city by trains. Train travel is very profuse in, in Italy. So uh, the trains would come to the different stations and they stop for five minutes and people get on and get off. And then after five minutes, the train continues. So the devotees were situated at the train stations and when they would stop for the five minutes, they run on the trains. And then they distribute as many books as they could within five minutes and then they jump off. <laughs> this is how they did it. So one time, they were, one girl, she was with them, she jumps on the train and she meets one man and he's not so happy to get distributed the book. So he's a little bit angry, so he grabs the book out of her hand and he pushes her away and she falls, actually she fell. And uh, then she got up and then left and went out and that was the end of that. So uh, many years later, that same man, he took, his, he took the book, didn't pay for it, but he kept it, put it in his library and left it there and never read it. After some time, the same man comes down with terminal cancer, goes to the doctor, the doctor says, you have cancer and there's, it's, it's in the later stages, there's nothing we can do, just prepare for death. So now he's really concerned what to do before I leave. So he thinks maybe I should turn to God. So he goes into his library looking for the Bible. He can't find it. <laughs> but then he finds the Bhagavad Gita that that girl gave him. <laughs> and he picks it up and he starts reading. He reads the whole Gita, becomes convinced that this is the knowledge he's looking for. He becomes peaceful. He's no longer in anxiety that he's going to die. He goes, he looks in the back of the book, and finds the address for a temple, goes to the temple, knocks on the door, and guess who opens the door? The same girl who distributed him the books. <laughs> she greets him at the door. And he sees her, he falls flat on his face and offers his respects. And then he tells his whole story. And he's thanking her so much, and he's also apologizing for what he did to her. So this is another example of how book distributed. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So these books are, Prabhupada said, like time bombs. I was in Chicago temple. I was sitting in temple. I was just there. One young man, he was like a hippie style. He had long hair. He came in and he said, are you, are you Swamiji? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, take me to New Vrindavan. I said, oh. You heard about New Vrindavan. What do you know about New Vrindavan? I don't know, but I just got this book and um, I read it and I liked it and I want to become a devotee and I, I want to go to a farm community. I heard you had one in West Virginia. Okay. So tell me your story. Well, I was sitting in my room and my father was taking out his, all his old books and bringing it to the bookstores because, in, I don't know if you have it here in this country, but in America, they have these, what they call used bookstores. And you can bring your old books there and they'll buy them for a small price and then they resell it and then they make money from those used books. So his father was taking all his, his books to bring to this used bookstore. And as he was carrying it out, on the very top of one of the boxes, he, the Bhagavad Gita was there. So his son, this boy, he looks, he, he says, let me see that. So his father gives him the book, he reads it, reads half of it. He thinks, this is what I'm looking for. He's trying to find out who's the author and what is the, what is the society behind no information. Now he's thinking, I have to find these people. After some time, he's walking down the street, and guess what? Book Street Builder comes up. He said, oh, I've been looking for you. Are you here in Chicago? He said, yes, we have a temple. Oh, and he gives him the address, he's there. He comes in, comes right to me for some way. He says, take me to New Vrindavan. I said, okay. <laughs> and then we made arrangements. And I drove him to all the way to New Vrindavan from Chicago. That's Mm, that's about uh, it's about 500 miles. <laughs> so how many kilometers? That's about 800 kilometers. Yeah. So I drove him. I thought it's worth it. Anyway, I decided to go to Nuremberg anyway. 
So I took him there and then I left him there and he stayed there and then he wound up getting initiated and became a devotee. <laughs> so yeah, you don't know. These books are just like amazing. Devotees, people become devotees just by, you know, these books. And Prabhupada said, these books, in these books, my transcendental ecstasies are there. My Bhaktivedanta purports are my ecstasies in devotion to Krishna. If you want to get to know Prabhupada deeper, not only the philosophy that he's giving us, but the personality who's presenting the philosophy, you can get a, a deeper indication or a greater understanding of Srila Prabhupada by reading his books. He's put everything in his books. And Prabhupada would read his own books. Sometimes he would gather the devotees together and they'd have a sangha at night. He would sit outside in a, in a warm weather, especially in Los Angeles. Devotees would get around him. He said, give me Krishna book. And then he would look for a story and then he'd start reading it. And then some of the stories were humorous. So Prabhupada, he's reading his own writing and he's laughing. <laughs> he's laughing. And the devotees are thinking, he's laughing. <laughs> and then Prabhupada could pick up, the devotees were thinking, you know, why would this Prabhupada be laughing at the own, his own books? Because he wrote them, you know, he knows what's in them. And, but Prabhupada said, no, I am not speaking this, these are the words of Krishna, I am simply writing down what Krishna is telling me. And Prabhupada is the medium for bringing Krishna's knowledge to the world through these books. So then this knowledge in this book is not just some nice philosophy or some, you know, trend. it's really the words of Krishna. Uh, real, through the realized personalities, because when the great souls, they hear the words of Krishna, their realizations come out in the form of their writings. And then when we read them, we are, we're actually getting in touch with Krishna through this transcendental knowledge. And so these books are very, very powerful. Um, how many of you here don't have a Bhagavad Gita? Everybody's got a Bhagavad Gita? Okay. How many of you here would like to give a gift of a Bhagavad Gita to someone who is dear to you? Or an, oh, okay, so okay. Do we have that many Gitas tonight? Yes. How many is that? Raise your hands again. Okay. And then you can take that Gita and give it to someone who's dear to you or even someone who you don't even know. <laughs> then they become dear to you. <laughs> and then, so we'll have, okay, whoever rose their hand tonight, don't forget, and then before you leave, we got our, our what is it, Lamanchita, he knows how to distribute books. Keep your hands up, go ahead and give him the books now. Their books are right behind you. Yeah, all right, get into action, right now. Okay, keep your hands up so he doesn't miss you. And don't forget to give a donation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's part of the whole thing. <laughs> We're not asking for much. Anyone else? I mean, if you simply touch these books, you'll start to feel ecstasy. It's just, there's, we'll give one to Valentina. She needs two, but give her one anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we had some more hands in that corner over there. Yeah, don't forget to to reward the book distributor before you leave. <laughs> so these books are so powerful. I mean, look how beautiful they are. You don't even want to, I mean, just looking at the outside is good enough. Are you counting? How many are you giving? Did you lose count? Okay. Is that all we have? Yeah, we have uh, 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a long class. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue on until all 2,000 are... <laughs>
God. Anyone else? Yeah. And you can give, you know, you give whatever you can, but give more than you want to. <laughs> Prabhupada wrote a nice letter to the German book distributors in May 6, 1977. That was a few months before he left. And he was congratulating on the German devotees for distributing books. And in his letter, and towards the end, Prabhupada writes, if someone gets a book, their life is transformed. If someone simply uh, reads a book, their life is transformed. If they simply see a book, their life is transformed. And if they touch a book, their life is transformed. These books are deities. Many temples, I think you do it here, I'm not sure. But temples put the, these books on the altar with garlands around them. Because they're deities, they're not just... Krishna has incarnated in transcendental knowledge. So these are Krishna in the form of transcendental knowledge. So they're worshipable. The books itself is worshipable. And some places they do pujas to the books. <laughs> because it is Krishna, non-different like that. So these books have been the, the foundation of our expansion of Krishna consciousness since its very beginning. It's because of book distribution. And the amount of books that we have recorded, that's, that's just recorded, since the books have been started delivering. And who was the first book distributor in ISKCON? A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. When Prabhupada brought his Srimad Bhagavatams over from India, he had 200 sets of the first canto, three, three volumes each, of these books. And he was going to bookstores in New York City, walking with these books and asking the book sellers, could you take these books into your bookshop and give me a little something? That was Prabhupada. There was one story where Prabhupada goes into one shop and it's a bookstore and a clothing store. It's got a combination of both. So Prabhupada talks to the man. The man says, well, you know, these, these spiritual books, people are not so much interested in it. And Prabhupada said, that's okay. You can just, um, you keep the book and if you sell it, you can give me something. So in other words, on, a, on consignment. So the man said, fine, all right. So he didn't have to give anything. So Prabhupada left the book. So the next day, Prabhupada comes back and asks the man, did the, sell, did the book sell? <laughs> Prabhupada came back. The man said, I told you, these books don't sell. And then, so Prabhupada left. And Prabhupada came back the next day. <laughs> and he asked again. And the man said, <laughs> He's, anyway, the book didn't sell. So there was a little table with a chair there for people to sit down. So Prabhupada sat down and he, told, he asked the man, can you give me a glass of water? And the man said, well, the water is over there. You can go and get it. <laughs> so his wife, she said, get him a glass of water. <laughs> you know. Women knows best, you know, so, so he, uh, so the man got up and gave him a glass of water. Prabhupada drank half the glass and left. The next day the book sells. Because <laughs> he did some service for a pure devotee and as soon as that happened, then that was, in, that was his good fortune. <laughs> so these books are very magical. And so there's two aspects, there's book Bhagavat and person Bhagavat. And in the Sri, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in this first canto, second chapter, verse number 17, it's described that there's no difference between the two. Person Bhagavat and Book Bhagavat. Person Bhagavat lives and preaches on the basis of Book Bhagavat, and Book Bhagavat is Krishna in the form of incarnation. So one can benefit from in spiritual knowledge and spiritual advancement by e coming in contact with either the person Bhagavat or the book Bhagavat. But the book, the person Bhagavat lives on the basis of book Bhagavat 
So the person Bhagavad and book Bhagavad are non-different. So the pure devotee is a walking transcendental piece of literature. <laughs> and anything you want to know, is like anything you want to know from the book, you look it up in the index and you can find the answer. So anything you want to know, you go to the pure devotee and the question is asked and the answer is given. So there's no difference between the pure devotee, Bhagavad, and the book itself, Bhagavad. So these books are uh, you know, very valuable and they've transformed so many people's lives. And the stories, there was one devotee in Italy, I forgot his name, but he was such a, an amazing book distributor. He's no longer in his body, but he distributed thousands and thousands of books. And he knew how to distribute books. One time he came to one office and then he asked the secretary and if he could see the, you know, the CEO in the office. And she radioed or she, she signaled to him. He said, I'm busy. I have no time for any guests or anybody. So he, the book distributor, this boy, he stays outside and he's waiting and he, and he opened, the man opens the door to greet somebody and the book distributor is there and he sees on the wall a picture of the football team. So he decides to go in. He walks into the man's office, the man gets surprised and he starts talking about football. <laughs> Nothing about Krishna consciousness or books or anything, he just talks and the man's getting into it. So him and the CEO are going back and forth talking about football. And after some time, and he's the man, the, the, the CEO says, uh, well, what do you got? You got some books? He said, yeah, all right, I'll buy them all. <laughs> he just, because he connected with him on, his, on what he was interested in, that opened up that relationship. And as soon as that relationship was there, the man was willing to, you know, take a book. Or take many books, actually, he did. So there's an interesting story. Lamanchita, maybe you never had this experience, but this is a nice experience. So one devotee, he joined the San Diego temple and the San Diego president said, well, we ask all devotees to go on book distribution in the beginning of their Krishna consciousness. So the boy said, well, I don't know. I don't really like to talk to people. I'm not so good with talking. I'm kind of shy and, you know, I, he said, no, no, just try it. I'll come with you. All right. So the boy's out there. He's kind of a little nervous. And the temple president is with him. And so he knocks on this lady's door. She opens the door, elderly lady. And so she's standing there and the temple president, give her a book. So he's a little nervous. He hands her a book. So she's looking at the book cover. She looks at the book distributor. She looks back at the book. She looks back at the book distributor. She looks at the book again and she falls over dead. <laughs> she died right on the spot. And you could imagine <laughs> how he felt. And of course there was a lot of paperwork involved. But then the next day he said, does that happen every day? <laughs> said, no, it doesn't <laughs> So the, the last thing she saw was a devotee and Prabhupada's books, and obviously that was her good fortune. Obviously she got a good destination in her next life. <laughs> so you never know what these books are going to do. <laughs> you don't know who you're going to meet out there. You know? There are people who are actually waiting for the books. They're saying, when is a book distributor going to come up and ask me to buy a book? They're not thinking like that, but inside they're feeling like that. So it's there. And because these books are the answers to all the problems. Because they're spoken by Krishna or they're spoken about Krishna. And either way, it's transcendental. It's pure knowledge. 
that answers all questions. I was listening to Srila Prabhupada speak on Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, Prabhupada said, in Bhagavatam, every subject matter that is available to the human society is found in Srimad Bhagavatam. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then I did a little bit of a, you know, reflection on that. And I, when you when you hear Prabhupada's lectures on the Bhagavatam, and then you read these books, you actually see there are so many subject matters that are mentioned in Bhagavatam. Bhagavata. Not just just for transcendental devotional service, but Prabhupada talks about everything. <laughs> everything is there. You know, there's, there's Ayurveda, there's Dhanurveda, there's what else? There is uh, uh, family life, how to raise kids. Uh, everything is there in Bhagavatam. You know, in the, in the third canto, it has the whole, there's one chapter called Time by the Movement of the Atom. You can actually understand the time factor through the movement of material energy, very scientific, technical words. A whole chapter, chapter nine of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, amazing chapter. It's all scientific. And there's one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto in the 26th chapter, verse number 34. If you read this verse, Prabhupada says, if the scientist can understand what we're saying in this particular verse, it can answer all questions on cosmological knowledge. Everything is there in Bhagavatam. And so with people who are really interested in learning more, they can find about anything in Srimad Bhagavatam. And not only the knowledge, but the best of all knowledge in these categories. So this is something you could also use to distribute books that, all right, it's not only about spirituality, it's, it's how to live life in such a way that you can find happiness in, in the activities you perform in your day-to-day -day life. It's just, it's much more than just transcendental knowledge. It's that also. That is the main topic, of course. So we're here in this uh, marathon. And it's the 19th of uh, six more days for Christmas. But then after Christmas, it's still good for Bhagavan, right? This will be after Christmas and even into January, right? Because the stores, at least, I don't know about your country, but in America, there's more people shopping after Christmas than before Christmas. Why? Because they're always returning the gifts they got <laughs> so they can get something else, yeah. And people buy the stores, drop their prices after Christmas, and people buy Christmas presents for next year, right after Christmas that year. Yeah. I don't know what they do with them. They store them in their closet for 365 days. <laughs> but that's how, yeah, so that week between the 25th and the 1st of January, Hare Krishna is a a time for you know really people are out there you know still in the shopping centers and the malls and places like that. So we have a great amount of uh, knowledge available. So take this knowledge, read it, and the more you understand it, the more you'll be enthused to also give it to others. That's really very powerful. Okay, let's see, what is it, five minutes to seven now? Yeah. So we have five minutes for, any questions or comments or anything about book distribution, any stories, realizations? Yes. Uh, how do you get the book? No, there's somebody behind you asking a question. Uh, who we shouldn't uh, distribute a book to, 
Because sometimes it is said that we shouldn't preach to a certain kind of people. Well, it's hard to tell that when you're out there. <laughs> so when you're trying to distribute books, you usually, you kind of look around and see. And you also pray to Krishna, who should I approach, right? You, you keep that mood of like thinking, who would be the best candidate, and you look. And then you really, you see somebody who you look, who thinks that might be really interested. So by using that, there's a good chance you'll avoid that if you pray. But again, there are, there are examples where there's one story where um, this is an interesting story. One devotee, he was one of the biggest book distributors in ISKCON. He was out there and he was distributing books. And he met this one girl. And the girl said, Oh, what you're doing is so wonderful. You, you devotees are really helping so many people and giving this knowledge which is so important. Thank you very much. And she's praising him and she's like ready to worship him. She's giving him all glorification. She buys a bunch of books from him. And he's so happy. Now he's a little puffed up. <laughs> he's getting all this praise. So he goes and he's, he sees this one man and he hands him the book and the man says, I'm not interested. And he's, he's thinking, well, maybe I'll get him interested. And then he tries again. The man said, let me see that book. Takes the book. Looks at the book. He said, I know these books. I've read these books before. And these books talk about God, and they talk about God's devotees. And they talk about the qualities of the devotees of God. And I can see you have none of them. <laughs> because, yeah, because he was so puffed up from the last one that the man could detect that he was like a little arrogant. So he said, actually, you read the book, you need it more than I do. <laughs> and he handed him the book back, yeah. Yeah, I heard the story from the devotee. He, he was telling us this story. So, I don't know if that answers your question, but... <laughs> yeah, okay, so it looks like with some Gandharvas out there ready to blow the horn, okay. So thank you very much, and distribute books, and don't forget to give a donation. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada Ki Jai, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai, Christmas Marathon Ki Jai. Done.